A very good evening, aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar A.S. Academy. Today's date is 21st of August 2022. So displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. So now without much delay, let's get into the first news article discussion. Let us take up this article which is filled with the stunning images of an Indian warship which is nothing but INS Vikrant. See, INS Vikrant is in news because this warship will be a part of the Indian naval fleet soon. So knowing about this warship is relevant from prelims perspective. That is why we will be covering the specifications of INS Vikrant also today. See, Vikrant mean courageous or victorious in Sanskrit. But remember, this warship is not the first one to have this name. Actually, India's first majestic class aircraft carrier was named Vikrant in India. But its original name was Hercules. Hercules was acquired from Britain in 1957 and it was commissioned in India in 1961. After this only, Hercules was renamed as INS Vikrant. For those who don't know, INS stands for Indian Naval Ship. But this INS Vikrant was decommissioned in 1997. So here you might have a doubt. Why this name is given to our new warship then? See, there is a special reason for this also. Hercules was India's first aircraft carrier and the new INS Vikrant is India's first indigenous aircraft carrier. Hope you can understand the difference. The first aircraft carrier was brought from Britain and it was not made indigenously. We gave that aircraft carrier the name INS Vikrant and that is why India's first indigenous aircraft carrier is also named INS Vikrant. So it is often referred as IAC-1. Here as you know indigenous means constructed or made in India. So IAC-1 was designed by Indian Navy's direct rate of naval design that is DND and it was built at Cochin Shipyard Limited CSL. Here know that CSL is a public sector shipyard under the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways. Previously it was called as Ministry of Shipping. Now moving on, what is the meaning of aircraft carrier that is AC? See aircraft carrier is a mini floating city. Its flight deck area is at least the size of two football fields. That is why aircraft carrier is also known as floating air bases. This full length flight deck is capable of carrying aircraft, arming aircraft, deploying and recovering aircraft. Hence you can understand that aircraft carriers are one of the important warships of a country. And also remember the IAC-1 was planned in 2007. And the construction was started in 2009. Now let us see the specifications of IAC-1 that is the new INS Vikrant. See it is 262 meter long and 62 meter at the widest part. You can see that here it has a superstructure and 14 decks. Superstructure here means the structure built on the top of the ship. It is powered by 4 gas turbines and its speed is up to 28 knots. IAC-1 is so huge that it can carry around 1,700 people. Along with this, it can also house 30 aircrafts including fighter jets and helicopters. As per the article, MIG-29K fighter jets and K-31 helicopters will be operating from the ship. In the future, it may also carry Rafale fighter aircrafts as well. It also has specialized cabins to accommodate women officers. The ship is a Momot steel structure of 21,500 tons. It is a special grade steel developed indigenously and used in Indian naval ships for the first time. Additionally, know that it contains very high degree of automation for machinery operation, ship navigation and survivability. Therefore, Vikrant is the largest warship built in the country. 
it will boost the indigenization of shipbuilding materials and processes and it is a best example of atmanirbhar bharat and provides trust to governments make in india initiative soon it will join the indian naval fleet as well once inducted it will showcase india's naval capability and india's passion in enhancing its maritime security thus bolstering india's position in the indian ocean region so that's all about this news article discussion in this news article discussion we saw in detail about ins vikrant we saw some of its specifications which is relevant to our examination we saw that ins vikrant is india's first indigenous aircraft carrier it was designed by indian navy's direct rate of naval design that is dnd and it was built at cochin shipyard limited csl as you know csl is a public sector shipyard under the ministry of ports shipping and waterways and then we saw that aircraft carriers are a mini floating city and its flight deck area is at least the size of two football fields we saw that that is why aircraft carriers are also known as floating air bases so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion this faq article here is about the rohingyas in india so in this article discussion we are going to see who are they their condition in india and why they made news before that the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here for your reference just go through it first of all let us start the discussion with who are rohingyas see rohingyas are a muslim ethnic minority group they are from the rakhine province of west myanmar so you may think that they are citizens of myanmar which is wrong no they are not citizens of myanmar this is because myanmar has classified them as resident foreigner or associate citizens there is a long history behind why myanmar did not accept rohingyas as their citizens today we are not going to concentrate on that we'll see the history some other day here just know that myanmar did not accept rohingyas as citizen and they were forced to leave myanmar after several events of violence these episodes of violence first began in the year 2012 and the myanmar army revived the attacks in the year 2017 after this attack lakhs of rohingyas took shelter in bangladesh and some of them came to india as per the minister of state for home there are around 40000 rohingyas in india so does this mean the rohingyas are refugees yes see there is an international convention related to refugees it is called the united nations 1951 convention relating to the status of refugees which is simply called as refugee convention according to this refugees are persons who owing to a well founded fear of being persecuted for reasons of race religion nationality membership of a particular social group or political opinion is outside the country of his nationality and is unable or owing to such fear is unwilling to avail himself of the protection of that country so in simple terms refugees or persons who have the fear of being persecuted for the reasons of race religion nationality membership of a particular social group or a political opinion and it refers to the persons who is willing to stay outside of their country where they have nationality due to this fear because of the fear that they will not be protected in that country the only option left out for them is to leave the country so such kind of persons are only called refugees or if a particular person faces serious human rights violation and violence in their country and if they seek protection from the violence as outside their country then they are called as refugees so if we are going to this definition then rohingyas or refugees only also know that india is not the party to the 1951 refugee convention or its 1967 protocol all foreign undocumented nationals are governed as per the provisions of the foreigners act 1946 the registration of foreigners act 1939 the passport entry into india act 1920 and the citizenship act 1955 see all these are very very important from prelims perspective make a note of it here i have a small task for you as well 
Now you have to find out the difference between an asylum seeker and a refugee. If you already know the answer, just post your answer in the comment section. Okay, now coming back to the news article. See the FAQ article says that Rohingyas have been deported to their country in the past. It is said that seven Rohingyas were deported to Myanmar in the year 2018. Here you should know how they will be deported. See, there is a process for deportation of refugees to their countries. According to the Ministry of Home Affairs, illegal immigrants are detected, detained and deported under the provisions of Passport Act 1920. And it is also done as per Foreigners Act 1946. See here, this is not just done by the central government. The power has also been delegated to state governments and union territories as well. So now coming to the process, see an illegal immigrant or foreigner will be apprehended by the police for staying illegally without any document. After this, they will be produced before the local court. If the accused is found guilty, then they will be imprisoned for 3 months to 8 years. After completing their sentence, the court will order for deportation. After this, the foreign inmates are moved to detention centers till the country of origin verifies and accepts them. In case of Rohingyas, for example, they will stay in detention centers until Myanmar verifies their identity and accepts them. Here the article says that in the year 2018, Myanmar issued a certificate of identity to the seven Rohingyas, which we saw earlier. These seven Rohingyas were moved to detention centers from prison after they were caught near Assam in the year 2012. And after this, the seven Rohingyas wrote to the Myanmar embassy in the year 2016. While writing to the embassy, they expressed their desire to return to their country and gave an undertaking that they were returning out of their free will. After this only, Myanmar issued a certificate of identity in the year 2018 and they were deported. As per the article, a total of 12 Rohingyas were deported to Myanmar. Now you may ask why India is sending them back. India know that Rohingyas are facing fear of persecution and violence in Myanmar, right? Then why should India do this? See, India knows about this, but there are certain reasons why countries like India are considering refugees as a concern. We'll see them one by one. The first and foremost reason is only limited resources are there in the country. It is the first reason. See, according to the World Population Prospects 2022, India will surpass China as the most populous country by the year 2023. So, to cope with this, India needs optimal utilization of these limited resources. So, India considers refugees as a burden. Apart from this, the refugee situation aggravates the security challenges of the country. It is because of the fact that there is raised in terrorism in the last few decades. See, illegal migrants are more vulnerable, so they can be easily recruited by terrorist organizations. Okay, so this is the second concern. So because of these reasons only, countries like India are avoiding refugees from entering or staying in the country. So India's stand is that foreign nationals who enter into the country without valid travel documents are treated as illegal immigrants. As we saw already, there is no national law on refugees at present, but there is a standard operating procedure which are issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs to deal with foreign nationals in India. Also remember, India is not that rude. We have seen some cases where the central government has provided relief assistance. It includes monthly cash, subsidized ration, clothing materials, utensils, cremation, shrad, that is last right grants. And we have even offered infrastructure facilities in camps. They have been provided to Pakistani Hindus, Tibetans and Tamils from Sri Lanka. And the main essence of today's article is also about this only. The New Delhi Municipal Council alerted the flat meant for the economical weaker section that is EWS to Rohingyas. In Delhi, the Rohingyas live in huts in the densely populated Kalindi Kunj and Kadar areas. 
A fire incident at Kanchan Kunj near Kalindi Kunj metro station led to this decision. After the incident, they were moved to empty land which belonged to NGO. The Delhi government provided them with water, electricity and mobile toilet. And as a solution to the resident problem of Rohingyas, the government came to this conclusion. And the decision was taken as per the request made by Foreign and Regional Registration Office, which is under the administrative control of the Ministry of Home Affairs. That's all about this news article discussion. In this news article discussion, we had in detail discussion about Rohingyas, who are Rohingyas, the problems faced by them. And we also saw why countries like India consider refugees as a concern. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. The news article is about Pradhan Mantri Fasal Biba Yojana that is PMFBY. The news is that the state of Tamil Nadu has sanctioned its share of premium subsidy in the scheme for the current year. What is important for us is the scheme. Okay. Here as you know in the title of the scheme Pradhan Mantri means Prime Minister. Fasal in Hindi means crop or harvest and Bima means insurance. So it is clear that this is the crop insurance scheme. Remember it replaced the then existing two schemes namely National Agricultural Insurance Scheme that is NAIS and the modified NAIS. Okay. It was launched in 2016 from its CARIF season and its aim is to support production in agriculture by providing an affordable crop insurance product. Now why is this given? This is to ensure that from pre-sowing stage to post-harvest stage, a comprehensive risk coverage for crops is provided against all non-preventable natural risks. Okay, So the basic aim is to support sustainable production in agriculture. So its first objective is to provide financial support to the farmer who are suffering crop loss or crop damage arising out of unforeseen events. Second objective is stabilizing the income of farmers to ensure their continuance in farming. Because sometimes after crop loses or damages, farmers tend to look for other daily wages jobs. In some instances, they also sell their agricultural land. So the crop insurance makes sure they continue farming. Another objective is to encourage the farmers to adopt innovative and modern agricultural practices. Then ensuring credit worthiness of the farmers, ensuring crop diversification and enhancing growth and competitiveness of agricultural sector is also objective of the scheme. Okay. Also remember the overall guidance and control of the scheme is with Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. Now we shall see who are eligible under the scheme. See all farmers including sharecroppers and tenant farmers who are growing the notified crops in the notified areas are eligible. Here know that previously the scheme was compulsory for certain categories of farmer and voluntary for some. But since 2020 it has been made voluntary for all the farmers. Okay. So which crops are covered? Firstly food crops like cereals, millets and pulses, then oil seeds and then annual commercial or annual horticulture crops are also covered. Okay. Here you can find the premium rates payable by the farmers. See, insurance premium is the money that is paid by a person for availing of an insurance policy. The premium paid by farmers varies according to season. That is 2 percentage for all carry food and oil seeds crops, 1.5 percentage for rabi foods and oil seeds crops and 5 percentage for annual commercial or horticulture crops. And the balance premium is shared by the center and state government on 50 is to 50 basis. But in case of northeast states alone, the share is 90 is to 10. And for the better implementation of the scheme, Government of India has designated and developed a national crop insurance portal as well. So very important topic with respect to preliminary examination. Make a note of it. You can use these points in your main answer writing as well. So in this news article discussion, we saw in detail about Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. We saw who are the beneficiaries and who are eligible under the scheme. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion.
The news article is about a report that has assessed the works under the Smart City Mission. See, in Tamil Nadu, to review the implementation of this mission, a committee was set up and now the committee has submitted its report. That is why it is a news today. So, using this as an opportunity, let us revise the details about this mission. See, it is an innovative initiative by Government of India launched in 2015. The mission has twin purpose. First is to deliver environment growth in urban areas. And second is to improve the quality of the life of people by enabling local development and by harnessing technology. Also know that the mission is operated as a centrally sponsored scheme. But here you must know what is a smart city. See, smart cities are the ones that focuses on improving lives through a range of approaches. If you are asking me what kind of approaches, it will be infusing digital and information technologies, urban planning best practices, public-private partnership and will make required policy changes to make a difference. Okay? So, in simple terms, it will put people first and will work for the people. And we can call a city a smart if it has the key outcomes of livability, economic ability and sustainability. Based on this, the main objective of the mission is to promote cities that provide core infrastructure and give a decent quality of life to its citizens. This is to be done by providing a clean and sustainable environment and by application of smart solutions. So, as part of this, these are all the core infrastructure elements under the scheme which includes adequate water supply, assured electricity supply, affordable housing essential for the poor, sustainable environment, health and education and like that many. So to attain these certain features will be developed in smart cities. It includes features like promotion of mixed land use, then expanding housing opportunities for all, creating walkable localities by reducing congestions etc. Then it will preserve and develop open spaces like parks and playgrounds. It will also give an identity to the city mainly based on its main economic activities such as local cuisine, art and craft, culture etc. Here note that the mission has a two pronged strategy. First is area based development and this has certain strategic components. One is retrofitting which is nothing but city improvement, then redevelopment which is city renewal and third is greenfield development which is city extension. So, apart from area based development, the second strategy is a pan city initiative in which at least one smart solution is applied citywide. So, once developed, such smart cities mission will be examples that can be replicated outside the smart city, catalyzing the creation of similar smart cities in various regions and parts of the country. See, initially, the mission covers 100 cities which are distributed among the states and union territories. And wherever necessary, convergence of other central and state government programs and schemes with a smart cities mission will be done. Okay? This includes convergence with Amrut scheme, Swachh Bharat mission, national heritage, city development and augmentation yojana that is Hride, Digital India and etc. Okay? So that's all about this news article discussion. This news article is also very important. So, make note of all the discussed points. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. See this front page article here. It says that torrential rain triggered flash floods and landslips in the hill states of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. And many lives were lost because of the consequence of the disaster. So, this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us understand more about flash floods in prelims perspective. See, excessive or continuous rainfall over a period of days can lead to stagnation of water and cause flooding. Flash floods also refer to the same situation, but it occurs in a much shorter span of time. See, according to the U.S. Meteorological Agency, the National Weather Service, flooding that begins within 6 hours and often within 3 hours of the heavy rainfall is called as flash floods. So, now we know the definition of flash floods. Now, let us see what causes them. See, flash floods can be caused by a number of things. Here, let us split the causes into two categories. One is natural causes and the other is anthropogenic causes. Firstly, let us see about the natural causes. It includes cloudburst, 
rain and streams overflowing their bank due to heavy rains glacial lake outflow slow moving thunderstorms or trapped thunderstorms upstream thunderstorms on mountainous areas hurricanes and other tropical storms secondly let us see about the anthropogenic causes see it includes dam failures and breaks climate change which cause extreme weather events destruction of mangrove and wetlands which act as buffer zone for flooding deforestation etc so these are the factors that causes flash floods see apart from these the intensity of the rainfall the location and distribution of the rainfall the land use and the topography vegetation types soil type and soil water content they also determine the speed of the flash floods for example we saw upstream thunderstorms on mountain area causes flash flood right here when thunderstorms occur upstream on mountainous area the runoff joins the rivers coming downstream so the speed will increase tremendously due to gravity this will cause more damage to the infrastructure lying near the mountain area and it causes landslides also so this is one example how the location of rainfall influences the flash floods so having this basic idea now let's come to india see flash floods are often associated with cloud burst which causes intense rainfall in a short period of time for example himalayan states they face the challenge of overflowing of glacial lakes which is formed due to the melting of glaciers know that according to government data from assam state disaster management authority india is the worst flood affected country in the world after bangladesh India accounts for one fifth of the global death due to floods. The most flash flood affected cities in India are Chennai and Mumbai. The main reason stated for this by National Disaster Management Authority is that nearly seventy five percent of the total Indian rainfall is concentrated over a short monsoon season of four months, that is from June to September. See, according to the National Flood Commission, about forty million hectares of land in the country are liable to floods. So here we must also know how to avoid this. What can we do? See, the first and foremost thing is that all countries should adopt appropriate rainwater management practices. Next is that planning and construction of embankments should be done to help divert water into open land area in case of heavy rains. Apart from this flood plains and overflow areas should be created along rivers and streams to help overflow the extra water without causing any damage. Apart from this flood warning and disaster management mechanism should be improved to better handle the situation. Fifthly, proper urban drainage systems should be developed and cleaned regularly to avoid blockage of drains. and finally awareness campaigns should be conducted for the public because they should be know how to handle floods like situations they cannot sit and wait for the authorities to arrive and help them okay so that's all about this news article discussion in this news article discussion we saw in detail about what are flash floods we saw flash floods with respect to india as well and finally we ended by seeing how can we mitigate the flash floods So with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion. So with these learned points now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice questions. Now look at this first question which one of the following statements best reflect the idea behind the short take off but arrested landing that is tow bar often talked about in media. Option A a system used for the launch and recovery of aircraft from a flat top the aircraft carrier option b a system used for placing the satellite in an elliptical orbit option c a system used for the launch of aircraft from the dock of an aircraft carrier and option d a system used for launching a missile to counter the asteroid approaching the earth see before 2022 prelims when such kinds of questions are asked we'll simply skip it right but in 2022 we had a question on a missile technology called fractional orbital bombardment system so this shows knowing about the technologies often in the news is very important also these are simple concepts so if you know about them it will fetch you two marks easily in prelims now coming to this question to stobar see stobar stands for short take off but arrested landing this is a system presented in iac 1 that is ins vikrant 
we saw in discussion that IAC-1 can house 30 aircrafts including fighter jets and helicopters, right? This is where STOBAR system comes into play. See, STOBAR is an assistant system. It assists the aircrafts on the carrier to take off from a carrier. This is needed because the runway in ships are short. It will not be long like the ground-based runways. So, some extra help is needed for the aircraft to take off or fly from a short runway. This is where stow bar assists. If an aircraft like Vikrant has stow bar, then the frontal part of the deck is elevated forming a curve. As you can see in the picture, this elevation is called the sky jump. So, when an aircraft leaves the deck at the end of the runway, it does not travel straight in the same plane. Instead, it is thrown upward due to this curve. This helps aircraft in gaining height during the initial period. Okay. In the meantime, aircraft engines start generating the required thrust and it gets stabilized in its flight. Here, the aircraft uses its own power to launch and is assisted by sky jump. So, you can understand why simply housing aircrafts is not enough but a system like this only will help in their flight. So, with this knowledge, look at the question. You will be confused with the options A and C but the correct answer for the question is option C only. See, option A is about another assistance system which helps the aircraft to take off from a carrier. It is called CATOBAR that stands for Catapult Assisted Takeoff but Arrested Recovery. See, in these systems only, the deck of the carrier is totally flat. So, they are also called flat-topped aircraft carriers. But in Stobar, the deck is curved. Remember that Catobar works in a similar mechanism of a catapult. The energy is stored in the catapult. When this energy is released, it gets covered in kinetic energy. Due to this, the object placed on the catapult is launched with the speed. The same mechanism is applied to the carrier. Okay? Catapult or these under the deck. The frontal wheel of the aircraft is placed on the moving part of the catapult which is above the deck. Once the energy is released, it moves and achieves great speed in a short distance and time. Okay? So, the aircraft is launched from the deck with the required speed to get airborne. So, the correct answer for the question is option C. This only reflects the idea of Stobar. Okay? Now, let's move on to the second question. This question is about Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. Which kind of risk are covered by the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana? See, as of now, losses arising out of war and nuclear risk, malicious damage and other preventable risks are excluded from coverage. So, statement 3 should not be in the answer. By this, you can easily arrive at the answer. The correct answer for the question is option C. Except the third statement, all other are covered under the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. So, the correct answer for the question is option C. Now, moving on to the third question, consider the following statements with reference to the Smart Cities mission. Statement 1, retrofitting, redevelopment and greenfield development are the strategic components of area-based development. Statement 2, in the 2020 India Smart Cities Award contest, Surat and Indur were given the best city award while Uttar Pradesh was awarded the best state. Which of the above statements is or are correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 only, Option C both 1 and 2 and Option D neither 1 nor 2. See the correct answer for the question is Option C both 1 and 2, both the statements given here are correct. See retrofitting will introduce planning in an existing build up area to achieve smart city objectives. More intensive infrastructure service levels and a large number of smart applications will be packed into the retrofitting smart city. So, retrofitting, redevelopment and greenfield development are internal component of area based development. Here, redevelopment will affect a replacement of the existing build up environment and enable co creation of a new layout with enhanced infrastructure. Okay? And the greenfield development will introduce most of the smart solution in a previously vacant area using innovative planning, plan financing and plan implementation tools. Okay? So, the first statement is correct. The second statement is also correct. Just remember the India Smart Cities Award context that is ISAC was launched to reward the cities, projects and innovative ideas promoting smart development in cities. The last edition released was 2020. And there are totally five award categories in ISAC 2020. Okay. So, this statement is also correct. So, the correct answer for the question is option C, both 1 and 2. 
Now moving on to the quiz question. The question displayed here is the quiz question for you today. Just try to find the correct answer and post the correct answer in the comment section. You can also attend the quiz in the poll section available in the community. Okay. In tomorrow's news article discussion, I will be displaying the correct answer in the beginning of the video. Now moving on. The main question for today's discussion is displayed here. Just go through the question. Try to understand the question. Collect points as much as possible and write an answer and post that also in the comment section. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar AS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.